In this video, we are going to implement infinite scrolling using server actions in Next.js 13. We're going to build on top of the application where we built a movie app and implemented a search functionality in pagination with these buttons where we could just paginate through different pages or search for a specific title. We're going to turn this into something like so. So instead of having the pagination buttons, we're going to have this a spinner at the end where it loads more movies and it's like an infinite scroll as, as the user scrolls down, it fetches more movies. But we have also preserved our search functionality. So if you go ahead and search for a specific term, it still changes that URL, fetches that based on that specific term. And then again, you can still infinite scroll, but keep that search term or query also uh, as part of your data fetching. So let's jump into the code and see how we have implemented this. Okay, so we're going to continue where we left off in the previous video. By the way, if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link it in the card somewhere so uh, you can watch that first to know how we get where we are now and then continue from this point where we're going to refactor our code to use infinite scrolling instead of pagination buttons. So let's just jump into the movies page where we're actually fetching some data using this get movies function. This was a function that we implemented inside of our lib folder. This is talking to our database to fetching some data. It also implements the search functionality for us. So going back to our app and movies in page, we're using that function to fetch some movies right inside of our server components and we're just passing it down here or mapping over it to just render these list items inside of this grid component. Okay, now what we're going to do here is to actually create a server action and call this get movies function inside of that server action. And the reason why we're doing it is that we not only want to call that server action from inside our server component, but we want to be able to also call that same fetching function or server action from a client component where we're holding an array of our movies. That's the only way we can have an infinite scroll. So we uh, fetch the first 10 movies from the server. We pass it as the initial uh, data or state to our arrays of movies on the client side. And then as the user scrolls down, we're going to fetch more movies and append them to that same array. So we should be able to also call that server action from the client component. Server actions are the best thing for this. There are basically functions that you define on the server. They run on the server, but you can call them from server components or client components. So the first step is to create this action. Inside the movies, I'm going to create this action.ts file. Let me just rename this to actions. That indicates we can have more than one action in this file. Now the convention is you would put this use server directive up top. This is only meant to run on the server. This is the convention for defining server actions. Now inside of it, I'm exporting a fetch movies function. This is going to be our server action. And inside of it, I'm calling this get movies functions. We saw earlier, this is the function we defined inside our library. This is our database access function that searches for movies. Now let's see what this error is. Okay, we have to go to the get movies and actually make this page and limit optional. It's expecting some parameters that we are not passing in here. So we're going to pass a page and a search query to this fetch movies server action. And then this is going to just call this get movies, pass on those pages and search term, and then get the movies back and pass it back to whoever it's calling it, whether we're calling it from our server components or client component. So let me just close this off and that going back inside of our page. So what we want to do here, instead of calling this get movies, we want to call the fetch movies, which is from our actions. Now we don't require any limit there. And inside of our server component, the idea, as I just mentioned, is to just get the first page uh, for that initial render. 
get the movies, pass them to our client components, which is just a list of movies, and then the infinite scrolling is going to happen after that. So if you don't need the page, I'm going to just clean this up. We're not going to change the limit. We just want to get the search, and the search is only to persist any query that the user has made. So we're not losing that query if we're doing the infinite scroll. And this is going to return the movies not inside of an object. As you can see, I'm getting an error here because I have to enable or pass in this experimental flag for server actions at the time of this recording. Server actions are still in alpha release. If you want to use them, you need to pass in this experimental flag to your next config.js. Let me just go ahead and stop the dev server and rerun the dev server to pick up these new changes. So the first step was to define this server action and call this inside of our server component. Let me just get rid of that import there. And we no longer need this navigation or uh, pagination buttons. So let me just get rid of those as well. Now down here, we are uh, passing that, that movies that we just, uh, it's returned from our server action down here inside of this list. So if I go refresh and go to the movies, page we should be able to see the first page of our movies now the next step is that i want to extract this part of our unordered list and put it inside of a component where not only we can hold an array of movies to then plug it inside of this grid but all but also implement a spinner and also an intersection observer where we can watch that spinner and then fetch more movies using the same server action that we created. So inside of our movies, I'm going to create a component called infinite scroll movies.tsx. And inside of it, let me just copy some code and I'm going to explain what I'm doing here. So let me just save this, go back to our page and actually import it here. And I'm going to explain what I'm doing in a second. Just bear with me for a second. Let's now review what's happening inside of this infinite scroll movie component. Let me just close the terminal so we have more room over here. Now from a high level, what it is doing is that it's rendering that same array of movies down here. And all I have added or appended at the end is this loading spinner. So this is a loading spinner that will be attached to the end of our list. Now up here, I have initiated a state inside of this client component. So this is a client component and I have initialized this state with some initial movies. This is what we are fetching inside of our server component. So inside of our page, when we are running this page, we are fetching some movies and we want to pass these movies down to our client component. So let's go initial movies and then pass these movies down to this component. Now to preserve the search when we are actually also uh, fetching more data, we pass in this search parameters or query that was passed in uh, as a search prompt to our page component down to our client component. Okay, so we are initializing a state with some initial data that's coming from the server. And the idea is we render them as an array or a list of movies. At the end, we have a spinner. And what we want to do is that anytime that that spinner comes into the viewport, we want to actually fetch more data. But before we get to that part, uh, we need to fix something about the data we're passing into this client component. Now inside of our page, this is a server component where we are fetching the initial batch of movies and passing them down to this component, which is a client component. So if you're crossing the boundary between the server and the client, which means this data needs to be serialized. For this, if we go back to where we're actually implementing this function inside of our lib folder, this is where we are actually returning data from our database. Now, before returning it to the client side, we need to serialize this. So I can just call json.stringify and then wrap this whole thing with a json.parse. So we are stringifying this result that comes back from MongoDB because it contains data such as object IDs and dates and stuff that may not be uh, a string. So if you're stringifying it first and then parsing it back to an object, so if you're still getting an array of objects. With that out of the way, uh, let's just move on to the next 
step which is actually implementing an intersection observer that watches that spinner and anytime that it comes inside the viewport we want to fetch more data for this i'm using a library called react intersection observer uh, it is using react hooks so you can get this use in view hook and it gives you back some ref and in view property which you can check pass the ref to specific elements that you want to observe and then once that specific element is inside your viewport you get this in view you can check it uh, and we in our application can check it to fetch more data so this is what we're doing down here i am getting this use in view hook i'm getting the ref and the in view property i'm passing that ref down to my loading spinner as a ref and inside of my use effect Anytime that this in view changes, I want to run this effect, but I don't want to load anytime this changes. I only want to load if it is actually in view because with intersection observer, anytime that this element comes to the viewport, it gets triggered or when it leaves or exits the viewport, it also gets triggered. I don't want to trigger any loading when it's exiting. I just want to see when it comes to uh, the viewport. Now, if you're not familiar with intersection observer, I ha do have a video on the channel where I dive deeper into how you would go about using it and also implementing it, implementing it inside React. So I'll link that video in the cart uh, so you can watch that if you're not comfortable with it. But uh, this hook makes it very easy to use Intersection Observer uh, under the hood and just check to see if uh, this specific element is inside of the viewport. And if it is, we're calling this load more movies function. Now, this is a function that I've defined right here. It's an asynchronous function. All it does is that it fetches some movies using that same server action. But before we do that, we're going to actually want to fetch the next page because on the initial load from the server, we got the first page. If we go to the fetch movies server action, uh, if you don't pass any page parameter to this fetch movies, it just returns the first page. Now, inside of our page component, we didn't pass in any page, so we just got the first page. Now, depending on whether or not the user was actually searching for a specific term, we did also send this search down there. Now, from inside of here, we already have the first page as the initial movies set for our state. Now, when we want to load again, we want to load the next page. So the first thing that we do is to get it, this page state that we are holding also inside of this component, add one to it, and then call this fetch movies. This is our server action. And the beauty is that you can call this function from your client components. So it's the same function. We called it from our server, and now we're calling it from our client component. We pass in this search that was passed to us as a prop. We're just forwarding it to persist any search query that the user had. And we're going to pass the page to this next page we created here. Now, if we get any movies back, we're going to actually change the page to be that next page now. And then we're going to set our movies. This is the local state for the array of movies by actually spreading over the previous movies and then appending the new movies at the end of it. So therefore, we have the first 10 movies coming from the server. And then now that we are scrolling and fetching more data, we're going to fetch 10 more data and then appending it to the same list. And this is all we are doing inside of this component. Now I have a little to-do note down here if you wanted to extend this or actually fix this error. You have to wrap this load more movies inside of a use callback and pass it to this dependency array for this use effect. Uh, a little side note for uh, this little squiggly line that we have down here. Now if I save this and actually go to our application and refresh the page to get the new code if i scroll down we should be able to see that spinner and actually a new batch of movies being fetched from our server action and appended to our list of arrays now if i go ahead and search for something down here even though we are moving the user to that url and as a refresher we were using this search uh, component inside of our page which was just rendering an input, listening to changes on that input, debouncing the user input, and then pushing the user to this new URL. So this is what we were doing on the search. But even though we push the user to this new URL and we have already fetched the data, 
this component doesn't change. Now, the reason why this is happening is that the result of this server component is now cached inside of the browser. This is something that's called the router cache, which is a Next.js specific cache. It stores the result of your React server component payloads. And even though the data down there has changed, it is the component hasn't changed, so it's still using the same component. Now, you can go to Next.js documentation where they actually talk about this different caching levels. If you go to this caching section, you can see there are four different uh, caches or levels of caching happening from your server to your client. The router cache is what I was just explaining. And if you click on it, they explain more about it, uh, how you can actually invalidate this cache. Now, one way is to invalidate this cache inside of your server actions if you're using one to revalidate a specific path or tag or call router.refresh. Another trick that seems to be doing it is to pass in a key to your component. So if I pass in a key over here, let's say start with math.random. If I now pass this in, what happens is that this component is going to be different anytime. So therefore, if I now refresh this movies to go back to the same page, let's say I want to get rid of that value over there too. So let's say I have already scrolled down and fetched some movies. Now the user comes back up and wants to search for something else. Now this time, because of this key, React is actually going to re-render this component. It's not going to use uh, the server cache or, I'm sorry, the router cache inside of the browser. So therefore, we would then see this new term being reflected down in the form. And then from that point on, we can still scroll to get more data. Now, to be more robust, you can use the UUID package instead of math.random. So you can just install the UUID package and create a unique ID for the key here as your unordered list or the grid list item for this component. So therefore, it's not going to be stale anytime that your users actually search for a new term. This is going to get recreated. That's a wrap for this video, folks. We implemented infinite scrolling using server actions, which allowed us to use the same function to fetch some movies on the server, but also call that same function on the client. This allowed us to attach an intersection observer to a spinner we had at the end of our list to call that same server action to fetch more movies so that we can append it to the array or the list of our movies. Now, there are different ways probably to implement infinite scrolling. This is what I could come up with to implement this in a way that works. If you can think of a different way to improve this functionality, hit me up in the comments. Also, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Like always, if you're interested in learning Next.js 13, you know the drill. There's a link in the description. Check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. And until next time, bye-bye.